Ladles and jelly spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, as the man himself might say, a treat especial. This. This is the AVE Shop Ruler. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, AVE is a YouTube channel, or a chap who runs a YouTube channel, uh, devoted to all things engineering. Uh, very, very knowledgeable man, very clever man, very funny man. Uh, and if you haven't uh, watched his videos, I, I highly recommend you do so. Although I do give you warning that there is quite a lot of um, profanity and crudity and various other words that end in itty. Even so, it's still well worth a watch and you will learn a lot watching his videos. Now, this is, as I said, the AVE Shop Ruler. This is a little gadget that the man sells through his Etsy store. There's a link in the description. Uh, it's a lovely little bit of kit actually. It's um, basically what we have here is Imperial scales in both 1 32nd and 1 16th. There's gap widths in thou. There's also uh, bolt hole sizes in both Imperial and metric. Uh, <laughs> there's also the, the focus hole. <laughs> and the idea is you look through that when you're, uh, if you're, if you're out of focus. Um, this will gloss over. Uh, there's a little hole here on the end for a magnet. I'll show you that in a minute. And then on the other side, we have uh, a metric scale in millimetres, but perhaps the most important thing I want to show you on here is this. Now you'll notice there's a series of small colour, gold coloured squares on here. This is actually a circuit board. Now you might think, why would you have a circuit board on a ruler? Uh, well, basically it's a torch, or it will be a torch once we put it together. What we have is a number of components That um, oh, you see those. So we've got a little a little battery holder, uh, a tactile momentary switch, and in there is a tiny tiny LED. And this is one of the most important and interesting things about this ruler: are these components, because this gives us a perfect opportunity to talk about SMDs, uh, so surface mount devices. Now, surface mount devices or surface mount technology is a way of attaching components to a circuit board without having to use through holes. Uh, it's a technology that was pioneered largely in the 60s, um, mainly by IBM, and was used extensively in the guidance system of the Saturn V rocket, so it has a, a pretty good pedigree. Um, now the idea is, by soldering components to the surface instead of through holes, it gives you a number of advantages. First you've got uh, lower resistance, uh, on the connection. Uh, the boards are easier and cheaper to assemble, especially if you're looking at automated assembly. And the components are generally cheaper as well. So let's have a look at some of the components and, and see what we've got. Now these are absolutely tiny, so what I've got here, hopefully so you can see it a little better, um, this is, uh, I think this is, these are 5305 LEDs, something like that. Um, but basically, these are also surface mount. Now you'll see they come in, in the, on this strip, and there there are holes down the side. Now the idea is this actually would come on a roll, so you'd have a rolls of components, and the rolls are uh, put into a machine, and that's what these holes are for. They're like the like um, the old cine film, uh, the, the basically the drive sprocket engage with the holes to to push the the components into the machine. And the machine will pick out the components one by one with a little robotic arm and put them on the circuit board. Um, so it means you know you might have LEDs, resistors, capacitors, diodes, whatever components, and they'll come on rolls like this, and they basically get picked out, put onto the circuit board, and then soldered in place. So we're not actually going to use this. It was just to show you uh, a little easier on, on on how these things work. So what we need to do is solder this thing together. So to give you an idea of what we're talking about with um, surface mount and through hole, um, I've got here an old graphics card and this is a perfect example because it has a combination of, of both types of technology. So for example you can see down here we've got all these capacitors and they are actually soldered through the circuit board, you see. Uh, but you'll also notice, and again, with the DVI, VGA and HDMI 
sockets on the end here, they're also soldered through. But you'll also see that there are a huge number of surface mount components on here. Um, there's a little microcontroller there, there are two more microcontrollers down here, and then there's this huge array of capacitors and resistors. But this is a perfect example of one of the advantages of um, surface mount. I don't know if you can see that, I don't know if the camera will focus that close in. But look how close those resistors are together. I mean, they are almost touching. Now, if you'd had to drill a hole for each end of those, you'd have nothing to drill into. The board would just be worn away. So it allows you to mount components much, much closer together. But it also demonstrates why through-hole technology is still used. For example, for these heavier applications like these power plugs, they're still through-hole because you can see they're much, it's a much bigger join, makes these much stronger connections. So, but yeah, this is a perfect example. And also with surface mount, uh, as you can see here, it allows you to put components on both sides of the board. You'll notice that on the back side of the board, there are only surface mounts. All of the through-hole devices are all mounted on the front of the board, you see. That's a good example of the use of uh, through-hole and surface mount devices. I'm going to start with the battery carrier because that's the, the largest piece. And I will say now that it helps greatly when you're doing this if you have a nice pair of uh, non-magnetic tweezers. But you'll see, let me show you, because this is the largest piece so it's probably the easiest to see. But if you look on the ends here, you'll see there the, are these little metal tabs. And that's where the solder goes. So what we do is we, we'll pop that in place Now there are various ways that you can do this. I'll just actually put a little dab of soldering paste on there, which is basically kind of flux. It just helps the well, I would. It's very, very cold in the workshop today, <laughs> and everything's everything's frozen up. But there we go. That, that's it. We only need a little bit. Um, so we'll just pop that in place, like that. And now what we need to do is we get our solder. Now I must confess I'm not the greatest in the world at soldering so bear with me. Right. Flow a little better. So that's a bit of a <laughs> it does look a bit like a bird's pudding. But there was something else I wanted to show you as well, and I think we'll do this for the switch. So if we pop the switch out of its little plastic enclosure. Be very careful when you're doing this because these things have a tendency to go twang and you'll never see them again, trust me. Um, as I say, you can see here these things are tiny. Now that goes on there like that. So there's another way to do this. So once again, we'll just put some soldering paste on here and that just helps the solder to form a good bond. I should have changed the tip on the soldering iron really, I was a bit lazy on me. Let me just drop that in place. Like so. Now, what we can also do is if we take a knife and what you can do is if you take just nip a bit of solder off the end and 
drop it on like that. This is actually a very simplified method of, of how it's often done in manufacturing. Um, using uh, what they call solder balls. Oh, stay. And now, if we touch that on the end there, that should... melt into place like that, you see. You see? So that's the switch. This is where things get really interesting because we've got to get that LED out of there <laughs> and onto the circuit board and it's absolutely minute. Uh, right, here we go. Wish me luck. Oh, so yeah, there we go. That's the, um, that's the LED and as you can see that is absolutely tiny. I mean there, there's my fingernail, my little fingernail for reference. As you can see that is absolutely minute. So, yeah, so let's pop that on. We have finished our ruler. Um, you will notice there is a different LED on there. <laughs> There's a very, very good reason for that. And the reason is because I dropped the other one and it vanished. <laughs> never, never to be seen again. So what we're gonna do now is, is, is put a battery in. Uh, it's a, a 2032 uh, three volt button Focus, hello? Yes, no? There we go. It's a 2032 lithium uh, 3 volt battery. So we'll pop that in and contact. Yay, it works. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I had to put the, a, different, um, a different LED on. Uh, fortunately, I've got some SMD LEDs. But you see, that's, a, but that's basically a very simple surface mount um, circuit. We also need to fit the magnet. I might do that later. But the magnet goes through the hole there and hopefully doesn't stick to the... but that needs to be glued in so we'll do that later. So I hope this has been useful to you. I hope it's been interesting to you. Uh, it's certainly been interesting to me looking into uh, the, the whys and wherefores of surface mount devices and, and different types of technology is very interesting. And uh, on top of that, we've got a lovely little ruler that we can use in the workshop with a light. And as any of you who know me knows, anything that lights up makes me go all giddy. So uh, <laughs> this has been a very interesting little project. Um, and if you want to make your own, uh, as I say, there's a link in the description. You can buy your own ruler and, and have a go at putting it together. Uh, thanks very much for watching. See you on the next one. Bye.